All right, what's up, everybody? Um, we are back on our 10th part um, in our series of how to go from zero to hero in cadence development. Um, let's get things going. And in this video, we're going to be talking about resource interfaces. Now, I'm, I am a little sick, so I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get right into it. So um, people have been telling me that the, the diagrams or like these write-ups are really helpful, so I'm going to try and uh, do that a little more. Um, so what is a resource interface? Well, a resource interface, you know, it's, it's similar to other uh, programming languages in that a resource, uh, you know, an interface, what I like to think of it is something that just sits on top. Um, and what it does, it, it does a few things, and we're going to go over that now. Um, so resource interfaces are things that you put on resources. Um, a, a resource, a quote-unquote, implements a resource interface. So if we were to imagine, uh, you know, a resource named greeting, um, and then we had a resource interface named iGreeting. It can be named whatever you want, but I'm just I'm calling it iGreeting just because the i in front of it is, has interface, whatever. Um, if that iGreeting has a variable inside of it, then greeting, if greeting implements iGreeting, which is the interface, that means that the resource must have that variable as well. Um, so that's kind of our first point, where it's the resource interface makes sure that the resource that implements it actually has the stuff inside of the interface. So if the interface has a variable, the resource that implements that interface must also have that variable. The second thing is it can be used to restrict access to the whole resource. Um, and the third thing is it can be more restrictive in terms of access modifiers than the resource itself. So we're going to go through each one of these uh, in a different part of the video. So if you don't understand this now, that's totally fine. We're going to walk through each part in, in the video. So the first part is that it makes sure that the resource that implements it actually has the stuff in the interface. So let's go over this part now. So what I've done is I've defined a resource named greeting that has a uh, greeting um, string inside of it. And we've initialized it to hello world, and I've defined a function that just returns this greeting. If this doesn't make sense to you, then I would go back to the previous uh, resources video and watch that, because this will make a lot more sense. So let's deploy uh, this contract, and this is nothing new so far. Um, and then inside of our transaction, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to you know create a greeting by calling this function, and we're just going to log this uh, to the console. So let's do that uh, now. So let's say let greeting. Um, and this is going to be, uh, you know, we're going to move a hello world dot create greeting. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to log greeting dot greeting. And we're just going to destroy greeting so that it gets rid of that error. So um, let's send this transaction and you'll see it says hello world. Um, and this is because, you know, this is our resource greeting and we're, we're you know, we're logging the dot greeting, uh, the variable on it, which is initialized to hello world. So this is nothing new so far. So let's actually define a our first uh, resource interface. So what you do is you say public resource interface. Uh, we're going to call it iGreeting. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just I like to call it iGreeting. And inside of it, we're going to say that this resource interface has a public let greeting, and this is going to be a string. So what this is saying is that this resource interface has a variable in it called greeting, and it's a string. And so if we wanted this resource, our greeting resource, to implement uh, this resource interface, we're going to say this implements i greeting, and so we do that with the uh, colon and then the name of the resource interface. And if we had more, we could simply do a comma and then uh, the name of another one, um, and you can keep listing them on and on and on. So, um, so the first point is says it makes sure that the resource that implements it actually has the stuff in the interface, and so. If we look right here, you'll see it's not complaining, right? Because the resource interface has greeting, and the thing that's implementing it, which is this resource, actually has the greeting as well. But let's say that we commented this out, right? Look what happens. It says resource hello world greeting does not conform to the interface iGreeting. And this is because of the fact that the, the resource interface says it has a greeting, um, you know, uh, variable inside of it, but the the resource doesn't actually have that, so it's saying it's complaining um, because it implements the i greeting. And so, in order to fix that, let's actually just uh, get rid of these comments, and you'll see that now it's totally fine, right? It's saying, okay, good, you, we've actually implemented that, um, and so we can deploy this, and everything works. So that's sort of that 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 first point. Now the second point is it can be used to restrict access to the whole resource. So let's see what that means. So let's say I defined another variable called public let other stuff, and this is going to be a string. Um, and inside this int function, I'm going to say self.other stuff. 
equals you can't see me with the interface smiley face so what this is saying is that you know this resource and now has another variable inside of it but that's not in the interface and that's fine but let's see what what happens so if we had another function called create restricted greeting this is going to return an at greeting that is restricted to the i greeting resource interface and I'll explain this uh, uh, now. So what this is saying is you'll notice that this is returning a entire greeting resource. So we can read both the greeting and other stuff uh, from it. But this function is returning a greeting resource that's restricted to the interface. So this is saying that we'll only be able to read the stuff that's inside of the resource interface. So we won't be able to read other stuff. And let's actually prove that together. So just like the previous function, we're going to return a greeting. The only difference is that this one actually types it, so it's restricted to the resource interface. So let's deploy this contract, and it gets deployed. And inside of our transaction, um, we're going to note that this is for uh, the greeting resource. So this is um, at, at greeting. Um, and below, we're going to do at greeting that is restricted to I greeting. Um, and so just to just to prove a point, you know, it will, we're going to log a uh, greeting dot other stuff. Um, and this works um, because of the fact that this, uh, you know, what I can do is I can type this to at hello world dot greeting just to like make this more clear for uh, for you as like the, the viewer um, that that this is has the type of hello world dot greeting because that's what's being returned from this function. And we can uh, clearly log other stuff. And if we run this, you'll see it logs. You can't see me with the interface, but this isn't restricted to the interface, so we can read it. But in this, uh, when it's restricted to the interface, so let's go down here, um, and let's just, let's just call these like greeting two, um, you know. And this uh, type is restricted to hello world dot i greeting, okay? Um, and so if we pull this up for a sec and we, we change this to create restricted greeting, you'll see that th this one um, is, is, is like this. And so if we, refresh, if we refresh this playground, look what's happening. Now it's saying, uh, you know, we can perfectly log uh, the greeting here, right? Because it's in the interface itself. Um, but it's complaining about logging other stuff. And why is that? It says the member of restricted type is not accessible other stuff. And that's because, once again, I know I'm repeating myself, but um, it's because this resource interface doesn't have access to other stuff. It only has access with the whole uh, resource. And that's because it's not in the resource interface. It's only here, right? All right. So that's our second point, that it can be used to restrict access to the whole resource. So that's uh, pretty important. And we'll see that come up infinite amounts of times. Now, the last one here is can be more restrictive in terms of access modifiers than the resource itself. And so this can be confusing. And so let's actually look at um, an example. Um, but what this is essentially saying is that, um, you know, in our resource interface, we can be more restrictive than the, than the uh, resource itself. So before I was saying that, you know, if we have something like a greeting um, and, and this resource uh, implements this, that means that this one has to have the greeting as well, right? And so if we were to comment both of these out, um, it'll give us that error saying that, you know, it does not conform, right? But there's a trick to this in the sense that it doesn't have to exactly match the access modifier. So I was saying that the resource interface can be more restrictive. Let's actually change this to, oh, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Let's change this to access contract. So if you watch the previous video on access modifiers, you'll know that access contract is more restrictive than pub because this can only be read inside the contract, whereas this can be read outside. Um, but look, it's still totally fine. And that's because, our, again, our resource interface can be more restrictive. Um, and this can be helpful in terms of things like functions. And I'll show you an example now. So. Inside of this resource, let's define a public function called log um, other stuff. Okay, um, and what we're going to do is in this function, we're going to a uh, log um, self dot other stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to say this is publicly um, available, right? Um, and so this function can be called um, anywhere, right? But what we're going to do is uh, let's just change this back to public for now. Um, and inside of this resource interface, we're going to make this function more restrictive. So we're going to say it's access contract function 
log other stuff. Um, and so that means that in, if we have the interface restricted, then we can only call this inside the contract. So let's let's deploy, um, and let's go back to our transaction, um, and we can see that you know if if we were just to to get I guess get rid of this so that it's not giving us an error. Um, what we can do is actually call this right because it's public function log other stuff. So let's do that um, right here. Let's do greeting dot uh, log other stuff, and let's let's just refresh the playground because it's it's being buggy. Um, and if we were to send this, look what happens. Um, you'll see that first it logged the greeting, which is right here. Then it logged other stuff, which is right here. And then it's greeting uh, logged other stuff, which is this one right here. So you'll see that this was callable outside, right? However, um, you know, even though we're exposing log other stuff in here, um, this won't be callable when, when it's restricted because it's only callable inside the contract. And so if we were to go back, um, and try to do um, greeting to dot log other stuff. Look what happens. It says function has contract access. So um, if I were to make this video longer, you know, I, I could prove to you that if we were to then make another function, I mean, I guess we could do that together. But if if, if you understand the point, you can stop watching here. But I'm just going to do this anyway. Let's just do a public function called um, you know call me, and this is going to take in a greeting. Uh, resource that is of type at greeting restricted to i greeting um, and this is going to take in that and it's not going to log anything but what it's going to do is it's going to do greeting resource dot uh, log other stuff and then we're just going to destroy the resource so that it stops giving us this error um, and the reason we're doing this is because you know again we can't call uh, you know the restricted greeting of this type um, in it publicly because it's access contract but what we can do is we can say hello world dot call me um, and the greeting resource is going to take in uh, greeting to right and if we were to refresh this oh we haven't deployed this yet so let's actually uh, deploy this um, it's giving us an error because it's being annoying um, oh it's it's just being annoying sorry the playground's being buggy again um, really? Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. So if I were to deploy this, um, it gets deployed and you'll see that, um, now in here, you know, let's, we, we can get rid of this destroy as well. Cause we're moving it into the contract. Uh, but look what we're doing. So, you know, we can't call, um, log other stuff from here cause it's only accessible in the contract. But if we were to pass this in, you'll see that down below it logs. You can't see me uh, with the interface. Um, which is, you know, being logged uh, right here. And that's because of the fact that, you know, even though this is restricted to the greeting, um, it exposes it throughout the contract. So it's callable in the contract. Um, and then we call it in the contract uh, right here. So this is sort of a, a longer video on uh, resource interfaces. Um, these are the three main points that I wanted to get across. Um, hopefully that made sense. Uh, and if it didn't, um, please, uh, feel free to ask in the comment section or, uh, message me on Twitter or, or whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, so we will see resource interfaces come up a lot in the next video on account storage. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.